So uh, this morning, our, uh, our theme, our message title, everything is like wildfire. And uh, if you noticed, even from that little video, just uh, if, if anyone has ever seen uh, video footage themselves or experienced wildfire, it, it is something that is both terrifying and fear-inducing, as well as something that is beautiful and amazing and just awe-inspiring. And uh, this morning, uh, I, I was, uh, as I was reflecting, and even this past week, on, uh, on the book of Acts, and uh, as we've been thinking about it for a long time, man, this really captures the move of God and the move of the Spirit and the move of God's people uh, like wildfire through the book of Acts. And so uh, we are calling out to the Lord that he would move in such an amazing way uh, like wildfire through Grace Community Bible Church, through uh, uh, the ministries that are happening, through the word that goes forth, through the worship and that our hearts would be set ablaze, even as the song says, that we would day after day be amazed by the good things that God is doing in our lives and just seeing more and more of the work of God's spirit and his power unleashed through his people this year. Uh, wildfires in, uh, in uh, the world as a physical uh, Ramification have happened on an increasing level since the 1960 or 1970s. Actually, uh, they've been charting the increase in uh, in America and just even on the West Coast, and how wildfires have continued to grow over and over and over again. It was interesting as I was uh, reading an article entitled "Into the Wildfire" that was written a little after that highest peak at the very end. There, um, the article was uh, was just researching and trying to understand this phenomena of wildfires and how do they start and why have they been increasing and what's going on in our nation and in our area and even with the world. And uh, since they have been increasing, so much uh, has. Uh, continued to increase because of the reality that we have not known, as they said in this article, we have not known the difference between good fires and bad fires. There are some good wildfires and there are some bad wildfires. And our approach for the last hundred plus years as this article was going on has been, let's just put them out. Let's just put them out. Anytime there's a wildfire, that's a bad thing. We've got to get rid of it and we've got to take care of it and get rid of uh, and, and try and extinguish this burn that is happening. And what they actually found out, scientists, after doing much research and after doing uh, uh, just much uh, training in the whole experience of wildfires, they have seen over time that that was actually a bad plan. That when they're extinguishing every single fire, they're, they're taking away not only the good fires, but also the bad fires. Not only the bad ones that destroy and devastate, but also the good ones that can bring about new life, that can clear away things that harm nature. And so uh, what they found is the, that they have to work in a different fashion and identify the good wildfires from the bad. And so this morning and in this coming year, we are talking about a great wildfire. We are talking about the best type of wildfire. We're going to be looking into the book of Acts. And while wildfires in their very nature are devastating and will destroy and they will burn to the ground, many times a wildfire that is good will do that. And what would spring up would be new life and new vitality and a greater growth and a stronger, uh, stronger place and a stronger position. And I'm praying for that very thing to happen in our hearts, in our lives, in this coming year, as we press into the book of Acts, as we continue to seek the Lord together, that he would birth within our hearts a wildfire that would burn us down and remove all that harms us and would consume us completely so that we would be more fruitful, more alive, and more vibrant in our faith than ever before. So I just want to set up the book of Acts this morning. I want to take some time uh, just to give you a, a, a heading for uh, where we're going. And so uh, why don't you just write down some notes in your brand new bulletins this morning. Uh, take some notes uh, on, uh, first, the purposes of Acts. Uh, the purposes of Acts. Like, why was this book written? Why would we spend so much time? And it's neat to see uh, that the author, who was, uh, who was Luke, he was a contemporary of the Apostle Paul. He was a ministry companion of the Apostle Paul. And Luke actually wrote the Gospel of Luke and, the, and this book, the Acts. Um, in, uh, in verse 1 of chapter 1 of Acts, he says this, 
in the first book, O Theophilus, and, uh, and we'll just start, stop there for a second because in that very first book that he's writing about, he's talking about Acts chapter 1 and the book of, or excuse me, Luke chapter 1 and the book of Luke. You could actually go over to Luke as well and you could see that he is addressing this same exact per, uh, person in uh, Luke chapter 1. He says this in Luke, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who were from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word and have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account, an orderly account for you most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things that you have been taught. And so that first book is the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke that was laid out. And that's actually the first 30 years of Christianity, so to speak. Approximately Jesus' 30 years of earthly existence and his 30 year, and three years of earthly ministry that he poured himself out. And Acts picks it up in the second chapter or the second book, so to speak, of this two book volume. And, uh, and Acts goes for the next 30 years of Christianity. And he's laying aside or, or laying out this orderly account uh, for the people. It was written, uh, both Luke and Acts were written about the early 60s AD. The early 60 AD. And, and we know that part of the audience was this man named Theophilus. And not much is exactly known about who was Theophilus, what was it written for, but what, is imp- uh, what are some of the things we can glean is that when he he says in Luke that he called him most excellent Theophilus. That most excellent was usually used for people in high-ranking positions. And so Theophilus might have been someone who was actually in, he might have been like a Roman magistrate, or he might have been somebody in significant position. Theophilus may have been his name. It may not have been his name. It may have been a hidden name because he didn't want to expose this, uh, this leader who was in, uh, in position. Theophilus actually means in Greek, friend of God or lover of God. And so maybe Theophilus was a a high-ranking official, a Roman magistrate of some sort, and he's writing to this person. And and maybe Luke is uh, is trying to evangelize this person and lay out the gospel and lay out the the Christian message. It might have been that uh, that he was a new believer in Jesus. He had heard about these things, and he had heard and seen what was going on in the church, and he wanted to found him in his faith. Either way, we're not totally sure who Theophilus was, but Luke was writing for him as well as the church and those who would come and long to hear of the things of Jesus. Uh, And so he was writing this gospel message. And so we see four purposes in Acts. We see that Acts could be evangelistic and, and see it as an evangelism where the preaching of the gospel is so prevalent all throughout obviously the book of Luke, but then it continues through the apostles as they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to so many people over and over and over in the, in the book of Acts. It's also apologetic in nature. Uh, many believe, many scholars believe that Acts was giving a defense, so to speak, for Christianity because if you were back then when Christianity was just beginning and starting, there were a lot of riots. Anytime the gospel was preached, anytime the gospel was starting to take over, there were, there were either Jewish, uh, Jewish people who would come and they're like, they're turning them away from Judaism. Or there were people in the, nation, uh, in the commerce and in the marketplace who, who their business was being affected because of this new religion and this new faith. And they're, and they're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And so it could have been a defense or an apologetic uh, to this, uh, this Theophilus uh, just to say, hey, This is Christianity, and this is what's going on, and you're seeing so many riots and everything, but let me tell you the story behind it, that this is a religion of peace, and this is a religion of hope. Another purpose that uh, is put forth for Acts is that it's historical. Do you remember from Luke, when uh, when Luke began to write these two... uh, two, uh, two books, so to speak, Luke and Acts, he wanted to give an orderly account. And so Luke is in, interested with giving the history of Christianity. You ever wanted to know the history of your faith and, and where did we start and where did we come from? 
Luke and Acts are great books uh, to go back and to see as Luke just tells the story of, uh, of the birth of Christianity. Also, uh, another purpose and a final purpose is it, it's foundational in nature. Remember what he said in, uh, uh, to Theophilus in, in Luke? And we're going back so many times because he's beginning it there. He says this, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught And then in Acts, he's picking up that story and he's continuing to tell the story. What this was doing was giving new believers, new converts, and these new followers of Jesus. It was giving them a sense that there is something bigger than themselves. This isn't just some some false random thing. This is an amazing move of God that we are part of. And so he is trying to found their faith and give them a security when this new new birth in Christianity uh, was just coming onto the scene. So many purposes for Acts, and there's a theme verse that I would draw your attention to. It's Acts 1.8. 1.8, and this is kind of a theme for the entire book. It also serves as like a structure for how uh, Luke would, uh, would unfold uh, this, uh, this book. He says in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And that power of the Holy Spirit came upon believers in, in so many amazing ways, in powerful ways, and in ways we're going to talk about. Sometimes it, it, it's, it's stuff that we should expect here in our day and age and go, man, God's Spirit is alive and He's not this passive, you know, dead entity that's not part of our lives today. But then there are some times that are just like, crazy, out of the box, and doing it for a specific purpose that God is moving. And so uh, the Holy Spirit is moving, and he's sending these witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria to the end of the earth. And that's a structure almost for what, what you see in the book of Acts. In, ver- in chapters 1 through 8, you see Jerusalem being, uh, being the main focus of the ministry. And then in chapters 8 through 12, the disciples are pushed out to Judea and Samaria, out areas around Jerusalem, north and south. And then in chapters 13 through 28, you see the Apostle Paul mainly taking the gospel throughout uh, the known world, the Mediterranean world, and to the ends of the earth, so to speak. And so uh, that's a theme verse, maybe a verse you'd even commit to memory this year as we're going through the book of Acts. And what's the theme then of uh, Acts? Uh, the theme that we are, uh, are going to be highlighting this year is like wildfire. And it's not only the theme for Acts, but it's also going to be our theme. Because like wildfire, you see in the book of Acts the spread of the gospel, the growth of the church, explosive and amazing. And you see incredible works of the Holy Spirit and the apostles themselves. In fact, um, some, uh, some people would debate, should, should Acts be entitled the Acts of the Apostles? Or should it be the acts of the Holy Spirit? And so there's kind of this back and forth between them. Which, what should it be? Is it the ministry of the Spirit through the apostles? Or is it the amazing move of the Spirit of Christ after Christ has has ascended on high? And so great theme for us. And you see in the book of Uh, book of Acts, like wildfire, just an amazing and explosive and exciting growth and spreading of the gospel. I think of so many verses that say, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls, verse Uh, chapter 2, and the Lord added to their number day by day, or in Acts 5, more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Acts 6, 1, now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, Acts 6, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly, Acts 9, and and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the uh, comfort of the Holy Spirit, the church multiplied. Acts 11, and great many people were added to the Lord, and it goes on and on like that. Acts 12, Acts 16, Acts 19. God was doing something explosive and amazing. And can I tell you, I am praying for that in our church this morning. I'm praying for that in our church, not only this morning, but I'm going to be praying that this year, and I invite you to pray that as well. We're going to take some time at the end of the service just to be saying, God, would you do an amazing move like a wildfire in our hearts, in our lives personally, but also in the, in the life of our church. May this be a, a year 
unlike any other, as we begin this 10th year of ministry, would you, Lord, show up in an amazing and powerful way to show yourself strong on behalf of the gospel and on behalf of your glory and your people. And so we're, uh, we're excited about that, going to be talking all year about these things. And so uh, one of the things I wanted to do, rather than just continuing to preach a message and jump right into the series, is just highlight it and then give you some highlights as well, ministry-wise, from our staff and from our leaders of just some of the exciting plans that we have coming up. And so I'm going to call up uh, just our leaders and have them share really briefly and really quickly uh, some of their most exciting things that are coming. So we're going to start ladies first, and since our ladies... Ladies always cheer the loudest for women's ministry. We're going to have Kathy Bryant come on up. Thank you. Is it on? I think it's on. Yeah, it should be on. Is it on? All right, great. It's just not as loud as me. Sorry. (laughs) That's great. Thank you so much for letting me talk about women's ministry. We've come up with a catchy name for our ministry. It's Women of Grace. (laughs) So, but that doesn't only reflect our church, but that also reflects the heart and the passion that we have to be women of grace. And a lot of that comes out in relationship. Stereotypically, women tend to be more relational than men. And so that's a lot of the focus of our ministry that we're really excited about, is building relationships inside and outside of the church that lead us into a deeper walk with the Lord. So we've seen that happen in amazing ways, like in our Bible study. Can I get a woo? Thank you. Just having women of all demographics. Because we are centered on the Word of God, we don't have a mom's group or an over 50s group, a married group within women's ministry. All of us have the Word of God that applies to us. So we sit around with the table, around the table with married, unmarried, have been married, never married, you get it older, younger, and we learn from each other what Christian living and the Christian life is really about, and that it has sharpened us. But we also have opportunities, if you aren't available during the day, to do that. Um, We have a conference coming up, two of them actually, Uh, so if you go out to the lobby, you'll see those. But just come be a part at any level and come join us in relationship, not just with each other, but that draws us deeper into relationship with Christ. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, love. All right, next we're going to hear from Aaron Buer. Come on up, our, uh, our uh, Director of Worship and Prayer here at uh, Grace. So uh, tell us a little bit more what's on your heart and what we can expect and some of the exciting things for those ministries. Yeah, yeah. so when I was um, kind of praying about what I'd be sharing this morning about the prayer ministry, uh, I'll start with worship because it'll be faster. Um, so worship, we're going to be having some exciting things coming up. Uh, do you all remember the, the worship and prayer night we had a few months back maybe six or eight months ago. We're going to be doing that more often, and we're yeah. going to be intentional about it. So be looking out for those. We're just going to come on like a Wednesday evening starting at 7, enough time to get off work and get here and just worship and pray, a little less time constraint, and just be free to do that. Does that sound good? Yeah. Good, good. good. All right. So the, the new position in prayer has been something that's been stretching me in my prayer life. And one thing that got brought up in my heart about what to share about the prayer ministry here at Grace is, first of all, to thank all of the people, all the prayer warriors in the room and the people that have committed themselves to be praying in this church. Thank you so much. It matters. It's important. And we thank you for that. Every email that you get from the the prayer chain and every email that gets sent in, it all matters and things happen when we come together as a church body here at Grace to do that and to lift people up. So thank you. Please continue doing that. Um, So thinking about experiencing God. And that's the one thing that stuck on my mind as I was praying about this morning, what I would share is experiencing God and what the difference is between having something and experiencing something. There's a difference, right? So somebody name uh, a car, like your dream car. What's it going to be? Dream car. Geo Metro. Geo Metro? (laughs) Just messing with you. (laughs) How about something like the $60,000, $80,000 range? Anyone? (laughs) Yeah, okay, Dodge Charger, right? Okay, so you buy that thing, you stick it in your garage, you have a Dodge Charger, right? But what's the difference between having your Dodge Charger and experiencing it? What are you going to do with it to experience it? You're going to drive it. You got to use it. You got to drive it. So here's the thing, guys. We have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We have that. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between having that and experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit? And that's the word for this morning as far as prayer ministry goes, is that... um, Man, in Romans 8, uh, Romans 8 says that the Spirit himself 
will intercede for us. When we don't know what to pray, he will do that for us. And he will intercede for us with uh, groans that words can't even comprehend. That's Amen. experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit in your heart. And I want to invite you to the prayer ministry meeting this weekend for the 36 hours. Because in my life, I feel like a couple times that it stops me from going to the Lord to say, I don't even know where to start. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray. Let the Holy Spirit start it for you. You'll get there. You'll get there. Just come here. There's um, a lot of slots open on Saturday. So go to the website, mygracecommunity.org. The sign-up is still there. Um, pick a slot. Come over here so we can experience God together. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Johnny Benz, come on up. So uh, we've had some uh, transitions. If you were here a few, uh, few weeks ago that we announced, and Johnny Benz has been leading faithfully our uh, Fuel Student Ministries. So, uh, Johnny, tell us a little bit about what God's put on your heart for Fuel and, uh, and where we're going this year. Excellent. Well, if you don't know about Fuel, Fuel is our junior and senior high ministry. We meet on Thursday nights from 6.30 to 8.30. And uh, as I prayed about the vision for this year, the, the theme that came up for me was the theme of Level Up. And my desire is to see each student's faith go to the next level. We mean that in terms of their knowledge. We Johnny, mean who is that guy on the screen? You know? um, some of you may not know that is Mario. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right, thanks. He's, he's Italian, if you didn't know. Oh. Yes. Um, and, uh, and so we want, we want to see them try to take their faith to the next level. That includes their knowledge. That includes challenging them to dive in deeper with their heart with Christ, the disciplines, becoming more disciplined in their faith. And uh, one of the ways that we want to do that is this year something new we've started is a leadership team called D6. And D6 is, we were, going, we're going to be going through a program uh, that involves apologetics, that involves thinking about worldview and wrestling with their faith, but also it's a chance for these students to take ownership of, of fuel, to, to develop their leadership skills, to dive in deeper and take their faith to that step of leadership. Because we've had students that have been believers a long time, and here's a chance for them to take that faith and then lead other people with that faith. So uh, one more thing I'd mention is we have a couple of events coming up. On October 21st through 23rd, there's a retreat we're going on called The One Retreat. And our guest speaker is a guy you guys might be familiar with. His name is Matt Till. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's a, high it's a high school retreat. So we have that coming up. And then in the, in the winter, we're going to have another retreat coming up as well. That'll be for junior high at that That'll point. That'll be with junior high so, as well. I think we were also praying for a missions trip for the students at yeah, we're, sometime over the we're coming still work, summer as well. Yeah, we're still working through the details. We have a possibility of going out to New Mexico if everything works out well uh, for a missions trip, but we're still working on the details, and we'll keep you guys posted as we learn more. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, now you're committed since I brought it up in the service. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, finally, I'm having, uh, having uh, our new adult, or not only adult ministry pastor, but associate pastor, Matt Till, come on up and, uh, yeah. And so, Matt, you've got like, uh, you know, half the church under your... Do uh, I have another 10 minutes? For yeah, mine? <laughs> go for it, man, go for it. So, what are some of the exciting things happening uh, in the ministries you're overseeing? Uh, I want to start with a few uh, short ones, if I could. Uh, just with the transition stuff from Johnny now taking over Fuel, one of the things, too, is you know that I've had to oversee uh, Grace Kids with my wife, Mary. We have recently made an exciting transition with that, um, and we've, uh, we actually last month hired on uh, somebody named Katie Mont. If you haven't met Katie, can you stand up, please? Katie. Wave nice and high. That's Katie over there. Katie is, uh, she's finishing up her last year at Trinity, uh, and we've hired her on in the sta uh, on staff for part-time. She's here to support Grace Kids, uh, just not just the, the volunteers, those who serve each and every week, but also our families as well. We're excited to have her on board. She's, her and Elizabeth, they're working very close together, and you see they sit together in church too. They're besties now, so it's amazing. <laughs> she's been a great fit, so th Katie, thanks for welcome aboard. Um, also, we want to just mention uh, uh, Paula Hearn. Paul, would you mind standing up again and just kind of sharing a little bit about men's ministry with us and just some exciting things going on uh, soon. Thanks, Pastor Matt. Yeah, real great things. Uh, a year ago, we had one men's small group. This year, we're starting with three men's small groups. They've been in effect for quite a while. Uh, these groups are very dynamic groups with great men in them. Uh, if you're not already involved in a, in a group, please come and join us. And uh, it's Monday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights. So we don't get on your weekend, but during the week, so you have a great opportunity to grow in your faith and bond with other men who are going through life just like you are. Yeah. Some other opportunities we're going to have coming up on October 15th, 
We got a little space before the fuel retreat and after the marriage breakfast. We're going to have a men's breakfast because men know how to do breakfast, right, guys? <laughs> Dave, men know how to do breakfast, right? Yeah. There we go. Thank you, Dave. There you go. You know, the <laughs> ladies really supported Kathy. Chances. Come on, let's get with it, guys, all right? So... <laughs> Uh, the other things we have coming up in uh, mid-November and November the 12th, we're going to be having a joint men's uh, retreat one day. You don't have to travel anywhere. You don't have to go overnight. It's going to be for about six and a half, seven hours. It's going to be on a Saturday, November the 12th. Really excited about that. We're going to have a guest speaker coming in, and uh, we'll get you more details in the coming weeks. We're also going to be doing a service trip uh, or a service ministry short morning Coming up, we haven't determined the date yet. We're going to be working on Feed My Starving Children in Libertyville, not too far away. And if you want to have food after that, you can come over to my place and have food after we do that service stint together to help people around the world who need food. And we can bless them, uh, be the hands of God to them. So that's just some of the things going on. And appreciate it, Pastor Matt. Thanks, Paul. So a lot of exciting things going on with men's ministry. Also, our, um, also the adult ministry, as we mentioned earlier, Andy and Sherry Lewandowski. Uh, would you guys mind coming up real quick just, uh, and just kind of briefly briefing us on kind of the exciting things that are going on with marriage ministry? Well, um, this is my wife, Sherry. She's going to tell you what we did last year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did four events, which were really exciting. We started out with going out on a date. We went to a movie, and then we went to Baker Square afterwards. And then we've kind of paired up some couples, and they went out to dinner together. And then we had a game night, which was really a great showing. That was a lot of fun. We hope to do that again soon. More and game then nights. Sorry. <laughs> Just putting in my vote. <laughs> and then the very last one we did was a Ravini at the Colors House, and that was wonderful. Had a great evening, and we have two more events coming up, which my husband Andy will announce. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's me. <laughs> Such a great um, As um, we mentioned earlier, we're having the breakfast on October 1st, and we're also having in October a um, date competition. And so one of the things I was talking to uh, my friend Johnny this morning that the things that we did last year for the um, date night, that built friendships and, um, you know, that are still going. And so Sherry and I were thinking, you know, people need to go out on more dates. And so we're going to have a date night uh, competition. You fill out the form. It's going to be at the welcome counter. There will be some more rules on to guide you on this. And then you bring them back. We'll have a couple judges uh, judge the most unique um, Enchanting, I mean, remember, I have it on here, you know, going out to McDonald's is not original or enchanting. Oh, so, bless. come up with something original. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we'll, you know, you'll win the $100. And um, those are some of the things. Plus, we're thinking about having a uh, uh, retreat, a uh, marriage, married couple retreat this fall. So, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Guys. Thank you. So couples, get your most get your creative hat on, right? And think of the most creative date you can come on. And then it sounds like uh, that date will be on us if you're the you're the winner. So that's exciting. Thank you, guys. So uh, just a couple of more things uh, that I get to talk about more. Uh, the first is I want to talk about our community groups. And uh, if you're here last week, uh, we, we preached on uh, just and talked about what we looked at, what it looked like to be a part of gospel-centered communities. And uh, one of the things that I've mentioned is that we're rebranding. If you've been a part of a small group, you are now part of a community group. And uh, so we're recently uh, rebranding them as community groups. Very excited about this. And one of the things that we're wa really wanting to do is to create a movement and just uh, in our church of what does it look like to have missional and multiplying community groups where people are constantly engaged in, in gospel centered Centeredness and constantly seeing the, the, the work of the gospel and the work of Christ at, alive in their lives. And we want to see lives changed uh, as a result of your involvement in a community group. And so one of our big goals this year is, to, it, kind of our big heading is everyone in community. Yeah. And so our goal this year is to make sure that if you're not in a community, that you will be in one, or you'll be a part of community this year. And our, that's our hope and our desire for that. And so one of the things that we have to do is we actually, our goal is to create 10 new groups this year, basically doubling the number of groups that are active right now. We currently have 10 active groups. Three of those are men's groups. One of them is a, a women's only group. And then that's aside from the women's Wednesday studies. But we have got uh, just some exciting things and exciting groups. And, and they're all just unique. And, uh, and so we want you to get part of those. And so our group leaders are kind of freaking out right now yes. because they're running out of room. 
And that's okay because we want you to be in their groups and we want to get you plugged in and it's going to be large and a bit uncomfortable in some of these groups right now, but our, because we have leadership opportunities, we need more leaders. And so we're hoping that some people will be desired to like, man, I, I'm totally ready to lead a new small group or lead a community group and I want to see these things go. And what our goal is this year is to create, launch 10 new ones uh, this year. And so we hope that you'd be part of those. One of the exciting things that we're launching is also on our website. You can go to mygracecommunity.org slash community hyphen groups, or you can just go to the main page and you'll find it, is we're launching a new portal. It is live right now. You can actually browse um, and you can actually see the different offerings of community groups. You can sort by your neighborhood. You can see um, based upon the, the titles and which the times which they meet. And then when you click on the group, you can actually see some details about that group. Uh, you can learn about what are the different properties and the things in which are, you can taking place in that group, what they're particularly studying, and then also connect with the leaders, find out who's leading those, and roughly the, and also the location where they're meeting, and then you can actually uh, join that group by clicking on join this group. You just simply send that person your, your, your name and your email address, and then they will get back to you, and they will get you into that group, and f you can learn all the details about that. So we're really excited about this. We hope that this will be a tool for you. We want to break down all the barriers that would prevent you from being in community and find something that's going to be right for you. And yeah. if you don't find it yet, you need to come talk to me because we'll make sure we get that going for you, okay? So we're hoping that this can be something really exciting for our church this year. Yep. One more thing. Yeah. C3. C3. Yeah. So we mentioned this uh, this morning. We mentioned it again last week. But C3, uh, Christianity, Culture, and Conversation. What we have felt as a church leadership is a burden a burden to engage kind of the gray areas and engage the messy stuff that is going on in culture and to do that in a safe environment and one in which you can come and freely learn and have a safe place to converse over these issues and to learn how to apply the gospel to your life and into these things. And so we are going to be launching this Sunday, September 25th. It's in a couple of weeks. The first class will be 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning. We're going to be meeting in the student center. There's no registration required. You just show up, bring your coffee, and come ready to and have a conversation, and it's open to everyone. The first one we're going to be having, you can see it in your bulletin this morning, is how do I vote as a Christian? I think we cannot avoid right now the the, the current uh, political climate, and many people are you wondering, like, man, how do I vote? as a Christian in this particular election. We want to have that conversation. And we are putting our necks out there, and we want to be able to engage in these things. And so we feel like this can be an awesome, awesome opportunity for you and for us as a church body to grow. And we're going to be having a lot of more discussions about a lot of other types of topics and things like that, too, coming up. Yep, awesome, yep. awesome. So as you can tell, lots of really exciting and neat uh, ministry opportunities coming this fall. Hope you will uh, just make yourself available to these things and uh, press in. And uh, maybe we could just take some time as a church body and just uh, join together our hearts to pray for this year, not only at the weekend of prayer, but let's do it right now, actually. So if you would, just bow your heads with me and let's cry out to the Lord uh, right now that he would continue to just fill us uh, like wildfire. Uh, Jesus, we would just call out to you for this year in faith, believing good things are coming uh, because we are committed to your word and committed to your gospel and your uh, your church. We pray that, Father, you would continue to move upon this church and through this church in an amazing way. For every life and every heart that is here this morning, I pray that, Father, there would be a new flame that would burn within them uh, this year, that the passions of Jesus would, uh, would captivate their affections, and like wildfire, there would be explosive growth within their faith, like never before. Uh, chains that were holding them back, sin that was encumbering, Lord, would be burned away, would be consumed in the fire of Jesus, and would, uh, Father, be replaced with an amazing new growth, an amazing new expression of Jesus at work and alive in them. May they even see, Lord, um, just the gospel and the relevance of the gospel for them on an everyday basis, and be lights and witnesses to those in their lives. May they see the Spirit of God move Moving, even to see miracles, Lord, this year in their lives as they are calling out for you to, 
you to show up and you to be real and you to be powerful and amazing as you are, Lord. May we tell of your glory and we pray for this church as well. May you spread through this church like wildfire. May you continue to add to our numbers. Would you continue to grow in us a passion for you? May our worship increase. May our hearts desire for you increase. Lord, would you add to our numbers? Would there be, um, Father, more conversions? May we see more people baptized, more people turning their lives over to you, more people coming to seek after you, even not even knowing why they're showing up on Sunday. Somebody told me about this, or I just felt drawn to it, or I saw the sign as I was driving by and just knew I had to get there. May your spirit be at work in an amazing way this year to move like wildfire, and may we see great growth in our church and in our faith expression as one people together. May you ignite a passion within us, and may your spirit have his way this morning, this next year, and this next month, and and may you burn through us and spread through us like wildfire, oh God, we would pray. In your great name, we all say together, if you agree, amen.